Hey everybody, Bill and Deb. Hi there. It's another sunny day in Florida. Uh, well, no, it's not really sunny. Oh, we right need now. the rain, I think. Yeah, we had some rain earlier this morning. Uh, where we're sitting at right now, you're going to hear people talking in the background. We're at the south entrance to Itchituckney Springs State Park. Actually, we're at the south south entrance. South south. This is the takeout place. <laughs> yeah, kayaks the, and stuff. Right, right. This is where they, uh, when you're kayaking and you end your your trip, this is the takeout place, which is technically a little further down from the actual south entrance to Itchituckney Springs State Park. If that helps you at all, some of you might be familiar with this spot, but uh, just right. Over that ledge right there is Itchituckney River right there, and uh, we went kayaking there a couple of times this yes, last twice. week, didn't we? It's yeah, wonderful. absolutely gorgeous. Uh, saw a couple of gators. Saw manatees. Manatee, a mama and a baby. Saw some yeah. um, river otters. Yeah, I couldn't get them on camera. No, though. they were too fast. Yeah, too and of fast course, and too far away. Of Lots right of by me. birds and critters that we don't know, and no, some pretty yeah. flowers that we discovered were. Um, now I can't remember what they were. <laughs> They're all kind. Of, they the alligator Lily. Lily. alligator Lily. alligator lilies. Yeah, <laughs> pretty. But uh, anyway, I, you know, I hope I'm saying this right, but I I do believe this is considered the Itcha Tuckney Springs River. But I know it's a spring that comes out of the ground and eventually ends up in the Santa Fe River and eventually ends up in the Suwannee River and eventually ends up in the Gulf of Mexico. Anyway. Did I miss anything there on that? As far as I know, no. Yeah, yeah. I didn't track it with you in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what were you getting ready to say? I was getting ready to say that... This isn't the exact date, but a few days ago, like yeah. March 1, right. marked our fourth year of full-time living. Exactly. Four years ago, we moved everything out of the house, everything that was left, which was not much. <laughs> yeah. Got into our red trailer and started this lifestyle. Yeah. And boy, have we learned a lot since then. Yes, we have. Yeah. We've learned a lot. We've met some wonderful people. We've seen several amazing different places but we haven't seen it all yet no no <laughs> we will never see it all no, that's the it. thing <laughs> and uh Lou, let me ask you before we get started with answering a few questions that we got uh are you enjoying yourself yes 98 percent of the time i'm having a great time the other two percent i have a cranky husband <laughs> And it, as if she never gets cranky. Oh, I don't. You, oh. <laughs> well, I know that's the image that you portray. It is. Um, I'm Mary Poppins. Perfect in every way. Everybody believes that. Uh huh. Well, I know because they always see you with a smile. What? We're not going to go no, there. let's not go no, there. No, let's don't go there. <laughs> but no, 90, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say 99% of the time. Well, of course you live with me. I'm, I'm a... <laughs> I'm a great guy to be around 100% of the time. <laughs> oh, well. That's debatable. <laughs> anyway. Here we go again. With that debate. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll never forget that day when we pulled out. And we pulled into this campground on March the 1st, four years ago. Yep. I'm not going to try to rattle off the year because, you know, that's too difficult for me. 2019. Yeah. And I had no, I'd never set up a trailer before in my life. You know, a trailer that we're going to be spending the night in. And it was on a campsite that was leaning towards the back like that. And I didn't chalk the wheels properly. And when I got up the next morning, we'd slid back a couple well, of inches. Well, we'd also had a freak yeah. snow and ice storm overnight that we weren't expecting. Because, right. you know, when you live in a house, you don't necessarily check the weather all the time, like we do now. Yeah. We check our weather in the morning, mid-afternoon. <laughs> yeah. So we know what's happening. But yeah. At that time, we were newbies, and we did not Yeah, know we didn't do you know, we, we didn't realize that that had such an important. <laughs> <coughs> and, you know, we were using those uh, Blue Boy auxiliary tanks to catch our gray water, and we had two of them. And when we had this freak weather front come through, got clear down to nine degrees with a wind chill of minus three or but something like that. But guess what? They froze. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> the the blue boy tanks froze, and uh, and uh, so then we couldn't dump them because they were froze. I mean, just one thing after another. But we learned an awful lot from uh, that learned, experience. We learned to carry lots of wheel chocks, mm -hmm. concrete blocks. <laughs> yeah, well, at first we carried concrete blocks. Yeah. And we learned uh, to. We also got an electric water hose. However, since then we realized, hey, if it's going to get below freezing, just fill your fresh water tank. Yeah. And we didn't realize that. Right. We didn't right. think about that. <laughs> yeah. Even our our hose froze going up to the trailer. Yeah. That's right. I forgot about that part. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> it was so, interesting. That was the first night. Yeah, and yeah. We learned a lot, and, and um, you and, know, and we continued to learn on a daily basis from that do. point forward, and we still learn. Yes, we do, we absolutely. Uh, but yeah, it was something else. But anyway, uh, main thing, reason why we were doing this, we did have some folks that uh, uh, posed some questions to us, and. Uh, we really didn't get that, as many questions as I thought we does, would. Does that mean that we've answered them as we go? I don't know. Or? Or, <laughs> but we do have, and I, and I would rather just read them. Now, one, I did not uh, put in a folder, which actually will be answering five questions, but it is a question we get constantly. So we will address that here best we can here in a moment. And I'm going to prompt you with it right now it's going to be an insurance question but we will talk about that here in a little bit but first let's take these in the order in which we receive them and uh, this particular person says hi thank you both for all your wonderful videos well you're welcome <laughs> we, you for watching. <laughs> we enjoy and thank you for watching yes can you tell me what time oh that's the one we're not we're going to wait on that oh, let's okay. go this direction here okay. all right i Anyway, I'm going to try this again. Oh, and this question we've been getting a lot too, so we're going to answer this one. Where will the next rendezvous be? We were on the waiting list for this one, but could not get in. We want to book early for the next one. We are loyal followers and would really like to attend the next one. You guys always look like you're having so much fun at these events. We do have a lot of fun. At we these have events. a ton of fun at these events. It is a blast. And, and we are yeah. sorry that you were on the waiting list and could not get in. But yes. That's one of the things we've talked about. We've right. kind of outgrown this campground here in Florida. Exactly. What we're going to do. Uh, probably for the next foreseeable future we're going to be having these events at uh, US Army Corps of Engineer campgrounds we are going to try to cover different states with each one to give more folks an opportunity uh, to come that couldn't come all the way to Florida you know which also means for the spring rendezvous because it might be in a different state that's not as far south as where we are here in Florida, that the spring rendezvous might be moved down a month or so. We may adjust the dates right. slightly. We'll adjust the dates to, to help get better weather, you know. Now the next thing about having them at Corps of Engineer campgrounds is the most you can, the, the earliest that you can reserve a spot is six months in advance at a Corps of Engineer campground. You can't reserve it before that. So what we're going to do which means you will have to, uh, you know, be watching our videos <laughs> closely we'll make the or paying attention. We're going to announce it uh, just barely within that six-month window we can, when you can reserve your spot. Yes, and we're looking yeah. at campgrounds that, of course, have lots of sites. Right. Um, because the campground we just had the last one out had 38. Yeah, sites. and we needed about 45 exactly yeah because some folks that that were able to get a spot ended up getting it at a campground down the road from us some ended up just renting motel rooms i know i'm tapping my hand uh, so yeah we're looking at campgrounds that have uh, uh, more sites available which also makes it imperative to get your reservation in just as soon as we announce it simply because you know, we're not reserving the entire campground to for ourselves. You're going to have to get it in because other people that don't know who we are could be reserving sites during those right. times as well. Right. So we cannot stress this enough that, uh, you know, if you think you're going to be able to wait until 
a month or a week or two before the the rendezvous man it's going to be a shot in the dark yeah we don't that's know. all there is to it it's going to be a shot in the dark so you know get those reservations in as soon as possible the next one most likely will be somewhere in october mid-october yeah and can we tell them the state that we're considering and we are looking at alabama thank you You're yeah welcome. we're looking at the state of alabama and uh so that's all we can tell you right now. We're going to discuss this a little further. You can't but, make a reservation uh, right now anyway. No, you can't. Because it's too early. Because it's too early. However, if it's the dates that we're thinking, you will be able to make a reservation sometime in April. Is that correct? Um, I think it's May for October. Okay. I'd have to research that again. Yeah, we'll have to research it again. But just rest assured that when we make the announcement and we will be prompting you well in advance because we'll make the decision shortly but we're not going to announce it until just barely within that six month window and the main reason why is to give lots of people an opportunity if we if we were to announce it now and if we say we made the decision that that's the one we're going to go to and these are the dates um, I don't know I, I just think no one can make a reservation now. No anyway. one can make a reservation anyway, but uh, let's say if you're going to be making your reservations at 12:01 a.m. and we didn't announce it until uh, 6:30 that evening, you know, yeah. so that's the part um, that would be unfair. It, it's just um, I know that a lot of you have to make um, arrangements with your job and that type of thing, so we do understand, but we it it, it you just can't make a reservation until six months out. Right. Right. And it will be the the actual uh, days for the rendezvous itself will be midweek, like maybe a Monday through Friday. Is that correct? Something here? like either come or, in on Sunday or Monday and leave on Friday. And yeah. That that like that gives us the opportunity to have more sites available to us. Right. Because then your weekends are for the weekend campers that just come out, you know, and then they all leave on Sunday. So that's our logic. <laughs> yeah, that's our logic behind that. So be watching for that. Yes. And the announcement will be made sometime in April or 1st of May. Right. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel, you might want to subscribe and, and punch on the bell so that you're notified of our videos coming out. And that yeah. way you'll be aware of when we've posted a video. And uh, we're trying not to keep it. I mean, it's no big, huge secret. It's just that we haven't made the decisions right. yet. And like we say, this time we could have, we could have uh, filled 45 sites, if that, right. if that gives you any kind of an indication. And, you know, each each rendezvous we've had, and we now have three under our belt, you know, we're, we're, we're growing. And it's awesome. At each one. And it's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. It is. It's so, wonderful, wonderful. So anyway, just remember that. Our next question. Hello. We so enjoy your videos. Our feet are itching to get out and about soon. But for me, the grandma has a question. <laughs> How do you handle not seeing or being involved with your family and grandkids? I know everyone is different. I babysat my grandchildren. It's just hard for me not to see them. Any suggestions would be great. Okay. What our situation is our grandkids are all teenager or above and therefore, you know, they don't want to come spend the night. And when they were yeah. little, of course, yeah. we wanted to spend the night. Um, so in our situation, that's not a major thing. It's, you know, we, we have phone calls. You can do uh, video chat. Yeah, FaceTime. <laughs> FaceTime. Wherever the, yeah, yeah. Uh, some other people that have babies, they you see them over there at the phone talking to, oh, what a sweet little oh, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Marvin and Mary, they've got... Uh, they, they, and they'll take the phone around and say, see my granddaughter? Yeah, they've got two new grandbabies, <laughs> and um, they uh, they do FaceTime almost on a daily basis. Just about. One, one is up in the central part of the country, and the other one is down in the southeast part of the country yes. so and you know. they're facetiming constantly and then they make they 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 lay out their travel schedule so they can travel to the to each one of them yes. and see them you know yes. at, you know two as or three times a year but they uh, but they're on the phone and with facetime and the, you, you know, know. The, the older grandkids it's phone calls i mean i was yeah. just on a phone call with my eldest granddaughter yesterday telling me about her day and it's not like communicate. I mean, we have phone service sometimes, most of the time. <laughs> and so that's a way to communicate. 
Um, some of the people, as you've seen, we've done walkthrough videos, they have, they go ahead and design their cargo conversion mm -hmm. with a space for cots and stuff where the grandkids mm -hmm. can come with them. We've got a doozy of a cargo yeah. conversion walkthrough video coming up where the gentleman showed us how he sets up an extra bed for the grandchildren and you don't want to miss that one it'll be coming up before long right so yeah. you know there's um, there's ways that you can work around it you don't have to be gone for long periods of time you can be gone yeah. two weeks a month three months See, in, i mean you you figure yeah. out your circle <laughs> yeah in our situation we try to be back in uh northwest arkansas and with our situation as well our grandkids are all you know fairly close together and our kids are right, right there They're on the same all area. In, in the same area although i'm trying to get them to move to different states yeah yeah that would be nice you know so they and then go ahead and set up a pad with hookups yeah. you know on the whole bit i don't see a problem with yeah. this yeah <laughs> Yeah, but, but but what I'm what we're trying to tell you, Grandma, is that just because you start traveling more doesn't mean that you are not in your children and grandchildren's lives. Yeah, and we we do uh, try to be back in uh, the area roughly every three months or so. You know, this and time we'll be gone longer than that. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> when we're back, we do spend lots of time uh, with the. We try to the yes. kids and the and the grandkids, the ones that are not too busy to, to yeah. be with grandma you know, and grandpa. Get, they get a, they get jobs, they get a car, they get yeah. jobs, they get girlfriends. Girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but anyway, that's uh, that's our situation. Yes. But uh, grandma here, she talks to two or three of them, you know, on a really regular basis. Try to you know? yes. Okay, this next question, this, this, is, this is funny. How did you train Delilah? Now, Delilah is our kitty cat. How did you train Delilah to stay near you when you are living? I saw a video where she cried at the door, and you opened the door for her to go outside. Yeah. And then she goes on to say that she saw a video when Delilah was outside. I will say that that is kind of the talk of the um rendezvous. yeah the rendezvous <laughs> people mm -hmm. um i don't know that it's anything we did we got her when she was six weeks eight six weeks, weeks yeah just a little and a little ball of fluff yeah and she uh you know every cat because we've had how many cats now three, three or so four. three or four yeah and uh every cat we've learned has a different personality you know and delilah is just very unique in fact a lot of folks comment that she acts more like a dog than she does a cat but she's never been we never have no. had along well, with her a dog but, but she's we treat her like one of the kids pretty much yeah. and she acts like the kids pretty much we you have know. conversations oh with yeah her and yeah. she answers us <laughs> and when we tell her no sometimes she gets mad and stomps off just like a teenager would you know it's it's strange with her uh, but yes she stays very close to us and she has a language Deb understands the language better than I do but uh, there's usually no no guessing as to what she wants when she's talking all you know. I know is that when we first started this lifestyle we were going to keep her on a leash and we tried that and that was horrible mm -hmm. <laughs> and we in fact she actually got depressed because mm -hmm. she couldn't climb a tree she couldn't do cat things mm -hmm. and so she was to the point of I was worried about her because she was throwing up and not eating right and we were very worried about her so we got to a campground that was it was a campground but it was isolated like this and I told Bill I said I'm letting her run and play if she decides to not come back, then we'll deal with it. Well, she ran off into the woods. And that she was, one time. She was gone about an hour. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon, here she pops her head back out, walks up to us at the table, rubs her nose against us, and like to say, I'm back. Mm -hmm. and, but she never has ran off since then? No. 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 Uh, we, uh, and she 90% of the time, she comes when we call her. Mm -hmm. And I know that's strange. But uh, but that's a situation so with the It's nothing that we did that I know of. <laughs> She'll start walking off, and I'll say, "Where are you going?" And all of a sudden, she'll stop, and she her tail will start flipping. That's the way she responds sometimes. <laughs> you know that. 
and then she'll try walking two or three more steps and I say, ah, 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 where are you going? And then she'll stop, maybe she'll turn around and look at me and the next thing you know she's turning around and walking back. Very slowly. Yeah, slowly. <laughs> <laughs> she does she wants it to make it she wants to make it look like it was her idea yes. rather than ours but uh, you know our relationship with with Delilah is probably one of the most unique relationships between humans and cats that, that we've ever seen that we've ever been as yeah where we you know where we've been around she is she is not your typical kitty cat so but I think what also helps is that when we got her, we were we started out living full time. Right. And then of course the motorhome caught on fire and burned, and that might have been one reason why she's more attached to us, because she escaped on her own, mm -hmm. and and she was just a little kitten. And mm -hmm. when we were outside of the motorhome, after we got the fire put out, we were looking for her, and we could hear her crying, and she was up. Way, way up in a tree she a climbed tree. <laughs> way 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 up in this tree and uh, when she finally got down and she ended up walking way 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 out on a very thin branch and, and the fell. branch gave way and she fell and ever since then you know she's been attached to us yeah and for, to to this day she will not climb a tree very high no she doesn't go very you know high. you know mm -hmm. one time <laughs> while we were park attendants she climbed a tree taller than she ever had before and she was up there crying and we kept telling her you there's you, nothing i can do there's You're nothing we can down. do you're gonna have to figure out a way <laughs> and she came down but uh she did finally figure out a way to get back down but uh uh she uh she doesn't do that you know she just doesn't do that so uh, it's hard to say it might have been some event that happened like maybe the motorhome catching on fire or something like that that I don't know caused her to hang tight to okay. us really but she she stays close and we feel very fortunate because of that mm -hmm. and of course there most everywhere we go usually we find people that know us and know who we are and one of the first things they want to do is meet Delilah and, and then uh, they're amazed that yeah, she just hangs out and with that's, us. Then that's the topic of discussion, you know. <laughs> you know, how in the world do you get her to do this? But that's uh, we just say she knows where her food bowl is. Yeah, yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. That's what we that's what we generally say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now here we go. This is the big question. And uh, the answer that we're gonna give you in our situation may not be the one you're looking for. Uh but anyway, hi, thank you both for all your wonderful videos. I just love it when they, when they start out that way. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, can you tell me what type of insurance you have on your trailer? Cost and coverage? How does it compare you uh, paying homeowners before you went on the road almost full time? Enjoy your week in Florida. Best, Gary. Well, our situation is kind of strange. Um, we uh, we have our trailer registered in Arkansas, and it's registered as a cargo trailer. And, and car, you know, when you deal with the revenue office in Arkansas, uh, in some states, and, and in some <laughs> other states, it's uh, how do I say this? It's just uh, they don't know how. To yeah, yeah, it. and they they kind of give you that glass-eyed look yeah their eyes get all glassy you know when you try to explain something that's that they don't have a button for um, so what we ended up doing and there and there was another reason why we were in a hurry we didn't have time to try to research other ways to do it but what we ended up doing was just simply insuring ours as a cargo trailer with improvements now we have it insured through our insurance company when we're hooked up towing it we're covered in that respect when we're hooked up towing it but then as far as the trailer is concerned it's insured as a cargo trailer with improvements at a higher rate at a higher uh, value supposedly yeah supposedly you know, yeah insurance companies aren't going to give me back right. <laughs> um, we learned that with the motorhome yeah uh, we had a really bad experience with our motorhome um, we were, uh, and, I, and I'd like to say that the agent that handled our deal with the motorhome just came right out and told a blatant lie. 
and I really can't say it that way because the insurance agent, well, the insurance salesperson who worked for the agent, worked for our agent, uh, really uh, needed to study more before this person started selling policies. Uh, because I remember when I called to insure the motorhome, uh, I told them what it was. The person asked me, you know, what I thought the value was, and I said, well, uh, I paid X amount, but when you go in and look, and there I am tapping my hand again, and when you go in and look at motorhomes like this for sale, you'll see them anywhere from this price to this price. So then the person comes back and says, well, I can insure it for the value that you speak of uh, for X amount, but for just $10 a month more, we can insure it for a much larger amount of money. And I said, well, let me get back to you. So I called my wife, called Deb, and she says, well, absolutely, for $10 a month more, let's insure it for this much larger amount. So we just left it at that because we didn't know anything about No, I didn't insuring. ever read the policy when no, I got it back. No, no. <laughs> and then, of course, when the motorhome burned, uh, and then they called me with the settlement. When they called me with the settlement, they, they said, okay, uh, Blue Book value is X amount, and your policy covers uh, so much percentage of that with your deductible. This is what you will be getting a check for. And I said, wait a minute. We insured it for a much higher amount than that. Our agent told us that if we got this other policy that was a little bit more money, that we would be uh, insuring it for a whole other amount. And uh, they said, well... Anyway. Sorry, you know, basically sorry. So anyway, then I, we got screwed. <laughs> yeah, and I had several heated discussions with my agent, my actual agent, and he admitted that this person messed up. He even played me back a recording of the phone call where we made the deal and admitted that the agent had messed up, but he was going to try to get the insurance company itself to cover us for that amount. And of course, they were a separate company. He was simply a, you know, he was a free agent or whatever you call him. Uh, but he handled several different company policies. And uh, of course that never happened because they, they didn't have anything to do with all that. They're not the ones that screwed up. <laughs> and so then I had an, op I thought, thought, well, what if I hired an attorney and sued him? <clears throat> and then I talked to the actual insurance company themselves and they said, well, if you did that, you'd also have to sue us as well, which that's okay if you think you need to do that. And I said, but you guys didn't do anything wrong. It's not, you're, you're not the ones that made the mistake. So, you know, long story is I just gave up on the whole thing. Uh, and for, uh, for paying us, for uh, compensating for that to over $3,000 uh, mistake, our insurance agent offered to take us to dinner. <laughs> and I said, hey, uh, no. a hundred dollar dinner ain't no three thousand dollars, you know. And uh, anyway, anyway, we dropped so, our policy and went on. So we went simpler with the cargo. Conversion. So our, our opinion about insuring these things is uh, you're going to get screwed no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it's bad opinion. Maybe we shouldn't have that opinion. But in Arkansas, in order to get it insured for, you know, what uh, we say we have invested in the trailer, you, we would have to have turned around and, um, and got it registered as an RV. And that would be so many hoops that we'd have to jump through in Arkansas so in our case we thought well let's take the simple route now we were getting ready to leave on another long run uh, we didn't know how long it would take to go through the process even if it could be done in the end uh, and uh, so we just simply went the easier route and insure it at, insured it as a cargo trailer with improvements because we have a we have a fairly poor opinion of insurance companies anyway, and if there's a way they can mess with you, they're gonna, so, you know. No, we know. And we I know that's not, a negative attitude. We would not, but, oh, in well. case of a disaster, catastrophe, wreck, yeah. whatever, we would not get what we have invested. No. We know this. No. That 
we're willing to take that and go, you personally might want to research it more in right. your state. You might want to do something. Because we were discussing this very thing last night around the campfire because yes. we still have a few people that's still there with us, you know, that were there for the rendezvous. And this one gentleman who's out of the state of Illinois, he said that it was it was a very simple thing to get uh, his uh, cargo conversion registered as an RV. I think he said a local uh, police officer come by, and did an inspection, and so signed each off on it. Different. Yeah, and, and he said it was, you know, real simple and easy and fast. So. So and then he got a different kind of insurance on it, but. Uh, uh, but another thing that kind of sticks in the back of my mind, you know, and uh, typical. RVs registered as an RV, they depreciate Quickly. pretty fast. And cargo trailers do depreciate, yes, but not near as quickly as a RV. At least that's what we see in our neck of the woods, you know, in the southern half of the country. So who knows? Maybe if we had a loss, it might work out to, you know, it won't work out to our man. No, it won't. <laughs> it won't. I ain't even going to go there. <laughs> but anyway, that's where we're at. Now, when we get back to Arkansas, we may research this a little bit more because we'll have some time to spend with it, and we'll see and see about getting it re-registered. But, but anyway, that's where we are now. Now everybody knows about the insurance thing. You know, can in we our that, opinion. In, in our, but that's what we did. Yes. The, we're not saying that that's what you should do or recommending and, that you do this. Uh, but this is what we did. We're going to let you go now, folks. This is Bill and Deb with iRide Tiny House Adventures. And you know exactly what I'm going to say. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> we're not camping. <laughs> we are living. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all get out there, do some living, and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.